Okay, this is a quick little introduction to the Pico Mac Nano. Um, this is one here, fully assembled as it comes um, from us. I've been asked a lot of questions about it and I apologise that I've not really had time to produce any documentation for it. So people have been asking, do I need to load software on it for it to work? Um, what do I need to do? Basically nothing. Um, it is self-contained. Um, the Mac emulator and the disk image to boot from are all in, uh, flashed onto the uh, Pico Zero. So it's a bare minimum, all you need to do is have a USB-C power connection. And if I plug, let's do it the other way around. If I plug that in, you'll see some oh, lights start going through the vent there and you'll see it boot up. And there it is, it's booted up into, uh, I believe that's system 3.2. Now, like that, we can't do anything with it because we haven't got a USB um, mouse connected. So um, I should say, because it's flashed into the Pico, anything you do on the Mac won't stay. It won't save anything. Um, but that does mean that it's not volatile. You can just pull the plug, put it back in again, and it'll always boot up to the same state. Um, Technically, I gather from the um, original Pico Mac project, if you do use the SD card to boot from, um, it's a bit of a uh, complicated process setting up a boot disk, but that would be uh, writable. Anyway, to use an accessory like a mouse, I've got a horrible old Apple Mighty mouse here. You need an OTG or on-the-go adapter. Um, or cable. Uh, we supply either one of these or one of the splitter cables, but they function exactly the same. Um, you just plug the power in and your device in uh, either way and plug that into the back of the Pico Mac. And that will then boot up. And sometimes the mouse won't work straight away sometimes it seems to want to be on beforehand sometimes afterwards so this is still powered up i'm just going to plug this in afterwards um, there we go so that was a good demonstration normally it seems to work um, with it pre-plugged in but i don't know if you can see that i don't know if the camera will focus on it but hopefully you can see the mouse moving i'm just going to move the window for you there we go I can see as has often been said this is not intended to actually be usable it was a proof of concept so there you go that's how you use it with a mouse if you wanted to use a keyboard and mouse you've only got the one port so you would have to use a keyboard that had um, a mouse out so like this apple one that has a usb on the end of it so you can then connect the keyboard into there and then the mouse into the keyboard um, having used that as an example, it doesn't seem to work with um, that Apple keyboard, although it does work uh, with several others I tried, but it's a bit hit and miss. Um, so that's it really for the um, Pico Mac Nano. Um, you don't need to worry about the SD slot, um, just have fun with it. Uh, there are two accessories for it, one coming soon, the other one already out, um, and that is a battery module. So this is the optional battery module for the Pico Mac Nano. Uh, it houses a 3 volt CR2 um, lithium battery, non-rechargeable, has a little rocker switch which goes through the back, that little blanking plate pops out um, and that comes in its place uh, and yeah a little voltage regulator, all, all, everything you need, that slides in inside and the second accessory coming soon will be a speaker module. And um, that's not to mean that it gives the Mac sound support. It doesn't. Um, the emulator does not have sound support. All it does um, is it plays a sort of facsimile of the Macintosh's original beep. It's a 60 hertz beep, but somehow, I don't know, it brings it to life um, when it beeps and you turn it on. So that will be available soon. Um, enjoy your Pico Mac Nanos. If you've received it, do send me photos uh, or unboxing videos or anything. It's just nice to get feedback. Um, oh, one last thing. Underneath, there's two cryptic little buttons, B and R. 
um, they line up with the two buttons on the Pico Zero. The R button simply resets it. So if you had it, uh, I might as well show you. Um, if you had it plugged in, the R button um, will be the same as pulling out the power and pulling it back in again. It'll just reboot again. The B button um, is uh, B for boot select, um, and it's the way that the Pico, Ma the, uh, sorry, the Pico Zero becomes uh, writable. So if you plug that into your Mac or PC, um, and before before you did, you held down the B key and plugged it in, it will mount on your Mac or PC as a um, a desktop volume like a USB drive that allows you to drag new firmware on don't have to worry about this because most of you will never want to do that it's just what the buttons for it does allow you if we ever produce updates or people produce um, variations that have different apps built into the system um, you can flash them yourself with a simple USB cable it's got to be a data cable not just a power cable using the B button um, and that's oh one last thing so I am asked how to take it apart. I'm not going to take it apart in this video. Taking it apart is just removing those two bolts. And you may have noticed that we ship um, all the Pico and Mac Nanos out with this hex key. And that's what they're for. Um, the reason behind those two bolts, um, if you've never opened up an original Macintosh 128K, is because that's where they were on the Mac 128K. And they're kind of infamous because they were so deeply recessed. You had to have a special extra long screwdriver to get at them so again i just thought it would be kind of amusing to replicate that idiosyncrasy so um, just take those two don't take them all the way out just out till they're flush with the edge here and then you can take it apart anyway um, the rest will be covered in other videos thanks for watching